Hey everybody, it's Royal Ruby, and I haven't done a video for a while. Let me shut this. We got some major sunage here. But I wanted to give you guys a video and show you um, all of Ruby's Christmas presents that she got. And she got very a whole bunch of them because everybody knew I was taking my trip to Arizona. And so everybody blessed me with so many beautiful gifts for Ruby. And I just wanted to unveil them to you today and let you see the changes, the transformations that have taken place inside my van as a result of Christmas, because I really got blessed at Christmas. Um, so anyway, guys, I just want to do a quick uh, video just to unveil some of them. Some of them I did discuss in a previous video because I knew I was getting the gifts and I did um, get the gift before Christmas and I kind of showed you some of them already, but I actually have some more that I got um since then that i want to also share with you so we're going to start out the video with um a few things that i am really really excited about all right drum roll da -da 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 <laughs> happy i'm so happy because i got for ruby a microwave do you believe it a microwave and yes it does work in my van and yes the power is there to power my microwave. So what I have is a thousand watt Jackery, which is a, basically it's a, um, a power generator that you put inside your vehicle. It's perfectly portable. If you watch my videos, you've seen my, my different ones. I have a 240 and I have a 1000. The 1000 will power anything that's putting out wattage below a thousand because it's a thousand watt Jackery. So my microwave, the one that I ordered, is a 700 watt microwave. That's what they had advertised. However, when I plugged it in, it's pulling more than 700. It's pulling like 980 watts. So yes, it does pull down my Jackery a little bit, but the beauty is I don't care because now I have a beautiful solar panel that's getting installed on top of my van and I have my cord already here. I was gonna show you guys all that as well. That will be powering my Jackery. And while I drive, of course, I can plug into my car when I'm driving. But when I'm stationary and boondocking in the desert, I won't have to worry about how much I use on my Jackery because I'll have that solar panel up there, 160 watt solar panel pulling in all the, the power. The only time it would become a problem is if we have cloudy or not a lot of sun. And even then I still pull in wattage off of it, just not as nearly as much, but I still would have the wattage to power my microwave, my coffee pot in the morning. So yeah, so let's get started guys. First up is the microwave. Here we go. Okay guys, here's the microwave that I got. Now if you can see it, I have it positioned under my bed so that I can get to it easily. And as you can see, it just opens up like that and it's not a big microwave I don't even know how big it is inside but it's big enough for me and it has a couple of different settings like your popcorn setting and it has a let's see what all we have under here popcorn pizza potato reheat defrost frozen dinner Oh, it has tons of um, settings on there. But anyway, I love where it's located because all I have to do is my Jackery's right here. You can see the cord. Now the one of the cords is for my solar panel. This is my solar panel that's gonna plug in. This is called an Anderson, an Anderson um, input end. So I ordered a 10 foot cord to plug in from the top of my roof where my solar panel will be into the, into the input, which is right here um, for my solar panel. So this is the cord for the microwave. So just plug it in, turn the power on. And it's gonna pull down some wattage. I'll try to show you guys what my my wattage is right now. It's at 80, 87%. So I'm gonna 
you know, just plugging it in is pulling wattage. You can see it's three watts, six watts. So it's plugged in there on the AC right there. So, you know, I mean, it's just nice to have a microwave because in the event, I want to make some popcorn, which is what I'm going to do. You know, these are just your, your packs of popcorn. And it tells you here how long to put it in for. Uh, 130 to 230. And... You just open the door, put it in, cut that off. Let's go to two. Now let's see what we got going on here. going starting to pop set it for two minutes you can hear it's starting to pop now it is pulling a little more than it did when I tried it inside the house inside the house it was only pulling like 980 watts but here it's pulling 1045 which is more but it's working And you can see it's got another minute and 16 seconds. I mean, it is definitely making my popcorn. Just going a little slow. It definitely is not a 700 watt microwave like they say it is. It's pulling much more water than 700 watts. Okay, it's working. Smells good. The main thing is to leave your vents open on the sides of the microwave. You can see this steam coming out of the side of the microwave. You always want to have ventilation on the sides. So you want to put it somewhere where you won't have, you know, you have air on the top. And I have it under my bed, so I have plenty of room under my bed. Because I have, you know, a couple inches above there that I could still have for ventilation. And it's popping. Yeah. Looks like I'm at 82% on my jackery. So it's pulling. Let's see how many got popped. Sounds like there's still some popping in there. I'm just going to let it sit in there and do its magic for a little while longer. And then you want to turn your AC off on your jackery. So I'm down to 81%. See, that pulled, pulled a little bit down. Shake it up. I don't know if it popped them all or not. Okay, so now we're going to take a look and see what got popped. Okay, guys, time for the big reveal. We're going to see how much popcorn we popped. Oh, it looks beautiful. There's a couple kernels in there, but not too many. Yeah. I'm looking in the bag. I mean, there's maybe 10 that didn't get popped, which isn't bad. But yeah, look at that beautiful bowl of popcorn. My jackery is down to 81%, so I started out at 86%. Mm. Oh, it's really good. So like I said, this is a 1,000 watt Jackery. The microwave is advertised as 700 watts. It's a Proctor Style X. 
popcorn turned out amazing. It drew me down about 5% on my Jackery, 4%. I was at 86 and now I'm at, yeah, 5%. <laughs> I'm a realtor and I can't do basic math in my head. What does that say about us? We're dependent on calculators. But anyway, back to the popcorn. I'm pleased with the popcorn process. Because I'll have that solar panel on top drawing power in. So, you know, it's going to keep bringing me sun. So if I want to make some popcorn or if I want to heat up a little cheese on top of my dinner, whatever I'm making. Mm. Water for tea, hot cocoa. You know, basic stuff like that. It's not like I'm going to be making full meals in it or anything. The most I'll ever let it run is probably two minutes at a time. For popcorn, my hot water only takes two minutes. Now what I do is I put a little bit of Tabasco sauce on my popcorn. Oh my God, it tastes amazing. Or if you're into cheese, you can get some of that nacho cheese uh, powdered cheese and sprinkle on there. I don't use processed food. So for me, because this is organic popcorn, I'm very careful. It's un, un, no butter. It doesn't have any butter. It just has sea salt on it. Well, you, if you're not into that, they have all kinds of popcorn. They have caramel popcorn. They have Cajun popcorn. You could probably put Old Bay on this. And it would be amazing. I've never done it. So yeah. Popcorn and Ruby. Compliments of my new Proctor Silex. Mm -hmm. And for movie night, guys, we can make popcorn now. Because you guys know I did a video on movie night where I used my little um, hard drive, external hard drive, which my son bought for me. And he put movies on there for me. So if I can't get the internet or something like that, I'll be able to watch movies. Now, that reminds me of my next present that I got for Ruby for Christmas. I showed this to you before. It was an early Christmas present that I got from a dear sweet friend. They got me a Wee Boost, which is going to get put on next week when we get the solar panel put on. And if you have a cell phase signal, this will boost your cell signal. So this is going to be really helpful with me getting my Netflix and stuff. I'll be able to get all my Wi-Fi that I need as long as I have a signal. Even if it's weak, this will strengthen the signal. So if you have like one bar, this will take you to four. So this is going to be installed on my van. It's just a little external antenna that magnetically it goes to the top. And then you have an internal antenna and a box between the two. And then it just sends you that from that cell tower and makes sure that it boosts your signal. So yeah, I'll be able to use my personal hotspot on my phone and pull the Wi-Fi in that way. So I'm going to show you guys next how I'm going to do that because a lot of people are unfamiliar with that process. And, you know, it's really easy to do. And most places you can get a cell signal because um, I talked to many people that camped at Plumosa Road where I'm going. And yes, they have a signal, but it's very, very weak. So all I need is a signal. It doesn't have to be strong and I can turn it into a strong signal with the Wii Boost. So the next step is your personal hotspot, which is, is on your phone, okay? So basically you get your um, AT&T, whoever you have as a carrier, to add a personal hotspot to your service. It costs me an extra $30 a month to have it. Then you go in like you're gonna connect to Wi-Fi on your settings of your iPhone and you'll see your Wi-Fi networks that are available. You select iPhone, because that's your hotspot. And then you just go into iPhone, you've already put your password in, because you have to establish a password for your Wi-Fi hotspot. And then you click on that, and then you'll be working off of that hotspot. So for instance, um, if I was on my Surface Pro, right? And I'll turn this on. I 
don't know why it's doing this. Why is it saying, let's set up your... I don't know why. Why it's doing this. I mean, my, my computer was already set up. So why is it asking me? Okay. So here's my, my Surface Pro. Okay. So if I wanted to get a hotspot off my phone for my computer, I would just go down here and I would go into settings, which is like a little gear. And I would just find the network and internet. I would go into Wi-Fi. And it would bring up all of my different Wi-Fi's like this is my Wi-Fi inside my house so I'm connected to that right now but my hotspot once I enable that on my phone which I can't do while I'm recording a video it would show up there as a hotspot so if I'm out on BLM land I just click on that hotspot then I can go into my computer and watch Netflix because I'll have the internet on my on my phone so the Wii Boost is the first step you gotta have that to boost your signal because what I've heard from all the different people that I know that have been camping out at Plumosa Road is that you do have a signal, but it's a very, very weak signal. And it's hard like, to upload videos and to do that kind of stuff. So if you have a Wii Boost, it'll take that weak signal and boost it. That's the first step. You need that. And then the next step is the personal hotspot which gives you the ability to connect your computer to your phone, basically. And you have so many megabytes a month. I can't remember what I have. I think I have 20. It's a, it starts with a T. A lot of bytes. I have a lot of bytes. So I'll never run out, basically, you know, no matter what. For the whole month, I probably will never run out. Now, if you do run out, you just still have the service, but it's just slower. So obviously, if I'm gonna be uploading videos, and I'm gonna be watching movies, I wanna make sure I have a good signal. But I won't be using, I asked the lady how much that is. She said, well, based on your usage, you will never use that much. So that's the other gift I got for Christmas. The ability to be operating in my van, eating popcorn, watching Netflix. Now, if for some reason there is not a signal at all, I'll still have my hard drive, my external hard drive, which I can plug into my computer, and that will provide movies for me as well. They're pre-recorded onto that hard drive. So I can just have movie night with that if I can't get a signal. Okay. The next thing I got is this really cool Arizona and Grand Canyon book. I got this from my son. And it just has everything in it. You know, it even has like a map of Arizona. It tells you where all the national parks are, where everything is close to you, which is really, really handy. Um, you can easily find all the roads. And then there's even what's called a walking eye app they tell you about inside the cover. It takes you through um, wherever you're located and it shows you It says here, um, when you get this book, you can download the corresponding ebook and destination content for free. <laughs> Just see below. You get destinations um, A to Z. Um, so if you're in a certain area, it'll bring up, like, say I'm at Quartzsite. If I go into destinations, it'll bring up all the closest. Um, fun stuff to do closest to Quartzsite. It'll come up on your phone. Um, that comes with this book. It's a free service. So that's kind of cool. And then inside, of course, I have the best Arizona attractions are in here. So based on where I'm going to be going, I can look to see how close they're going to be to where I'm at. I do plan on going um, to Lake Havasu, which I heard is beautiful. That's about 70 miles north of where I'm going to be. So it's going to be well worth the drive up there. And I may consider when I come back going to the Grand Canyon. Depends on the weather. Depends on a lot of things. But if the weather's good, 
um, on my drive back to Delaware, I am going to the Grand Canyon. So this also has a whole chapter on the Grand Canyon. Um, it tells you a little bit of history about the different Indians that, you know, originally occupied Arizona. Um, there's a lot of Indians. There's the Hopi tribe, the Tohono and Acomel tribe, the desert people, the Western Apache, the Navajo. Um, they were the first Arizonians. Um, it's just a really in-depth book and it, it has a lot to offer. Now, I'm not going to get to see all this, obviously, because I'm going to be restricted to the southern areas because I don't want to be north because that's where it's colder because I'm going in January. But this book is going to be amazing. So I got this for my son for Christmas for Ruby. I consider it a Ruby gift. And then I got this. Now, this is in my car and underneath my hood. And I'm going to show it to you guys. Um, another video I'm going to go out and show you under my hood where I have it attached. But this was another gift I got, and this is called Ritter Rat, okay? I think it was $59 with shipping, because they charge you shipping. Even though on Amazon Prime, they still charge me shipping for the Ritter Rat, because I guess the vendor is shipping directly from their location. But this is supposed to guarantee that you will not get any pack rats under your van to eat your wires while you're boondocking. Um, it says here, pack rats can cost you thousands of dollars in damage by chewing through wiring and other equipment in your engine compartment. Known also as wood or trade rats, they are found throughout the Americas with the heaviest concentrations in the southwestern United States. Engine compartments are a favorite place for them to engage in their nocturnal activities, even vehicles that are driven daily. At nighttime, they chew through the wiring shielding and other items to sharpen their teeth and they have a profound talent for nibbling in remote areas where it takes many hours for your mechanic to find and fix the problem the result is shorted or broken wires blown fuses inoperable equipment and even the risk of engine compartment fires the ritter rat protects your vehicle by discouraging pack rats from building nests and causing damage to the wiring and other edible items in your engine compartment it works on the principle that rodents are nocturnal and most active at night. This unit interferes with the ordinary behavior through supplying precisely timed light bursts. These interfering lights cause rats to seek other shelter for nesting. Imagine someone coming into your bedroom and turning the light switch on and off every few seconds. Installation is easy and can be accomplished without drilling or using any special tools. Now the one that I got is a battery operated, it's the R4. The R4 operates with two AA batteries and you have to change them out every six months. So I got mine in in December, so in June I'll put two new ones in. It attaches to your glove, co your um, engine compartment by a really, really heavy duty magnet that is attached to the device. And I'll be showing it to you in a minute because I have it under my compartment now. It's so durable that you can literally drive with that in there and it will not come off. Now I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take it off and take the batteries out and put it in when I get out there. But you can leave it on. It will not come off because I read testimonies of people that have driven all kinds of four-wheel drive vehicles and kept it in there and it literally never comes off. So what it does, once you put those batteries in, it just blinks. This, this light, this light burst just keeps blinking. So the light disrupts the pack rats and the critters from making a, you know, deciding to eat all your wires. They love the taste of your wires, so they're going to try to chew them. The other thing I told you guys is the Irish Spring idea. Put a bar of Irish Spring in your glove compartment box, and you could also do the motion lights like I showed you underneath your van. I will always have one of those when I'm parked as well. So yeah, I mean, it looks to me like it's going to, you know, be a pretty amazing um, little thing to have. And now I'm going to show you what the device actually looks like. I'm going to take you out to the van and I'm going to show you what it looks like, okay? Okay, so here's the engine compartment of my van. It's kind of nasty. It is a 1996 van, so it's not going to be shiny and clean in here. <laughs> but anyway, you can see it flashing. There it is. See it? So you can see that it's magnetic has these strong magnets and I just put it here because I have a lot of wires right in this section here 
um, you can put it anywhere. Like if you want to put it over on this side, you could even, you know, maybe put it over here if you want to. I'll move it down a little bit. Put it down in there. Wherever you have a magnetic surface, I put it there. But yeah, that's supposed to really do the trick. And that little light just comes on and off and on and off. Sounds like something really simple. But I'll tell you what, it's going to keep the keep the pack rats away from my van when I'm packing or when I'm boondocking out in Arizona. So yeah, that's another gift that, that Ruby got for Christmas. I also got this really cool, it's called a Go Donut. And as you can see, you can just sit your your phone in there and you can turn it this way. It just has these ridges in there and it's made of like plastic. You can sit it on any surface right there and just stick your phone in it. If you want to watch movies, I can put my Surface Pro in it. As you can see, I have it sitting here and I have my Surface Pro leaning on it. And now if I would just put this up, I could watch movies. Um, I have it leaning forward and it just gives it a nice angle. Um, you can also stand it up the other way. So yeah, I got that. It's called Go Donut. I love it. Now the other idea I have with the microwave is that if I want to make, you know, like a cup of tea, which I love a cup of tea, you know, all I have to do some water in my cup here and now I open my microwave sit my cup inside turn it on and push two and now it's heating up my water for my tea how cool is that so I do have this little, um, it's like a, a cup warmer thing. It's out in the back of my van that I can sit down in my cup to heat up my water that way. But it's electric also. It also plugs into the Jackery. So either way, you know, it's plugged into the Jackery. So this way I'm just putting it in the microwave. The microwave is right inside underneath my bed. Easy to get to. And if I want to, I could always put it out the back of the van if I'm cooking or whatever because it's easy to move because it's not a heavy microwave. I think it was like $44 for the microwave. So yeah, now I'm heating up my, let's see, now my Jackery's at 80%. It was at 81 after I did the popcorn. I started out at 86. Now I'm heating up a, pop, a cup of water for tea. And this is the end of my cord. Remember I told you I had to buy a special cord to plug into my panel? Um, and I got originally a six foot cord, which is this one. I'm trying to show you all my cords. Because I had to do a lot of research to figure this out because there was no YouTube videos to show me. These are called MC4 connectors. There's a male and a female. The solar panel that I purchased from Rich Solar comes with these kind of MC4 connectors. So, sounds like my tea's done. Hold on, let me get it. Get my little tea bag. My shy dandelion tea, which you guys know I love. I'm gonna just put that in there. I'll let it steep. So, oh my God, I love chai dandelion tea. So now I'm down to 78%. Okay, so I was at 86%. I used the microwave for a bag of popcorn. Went from 86 to 81. I used 5%. And now I just went from 81 to 78, heating up my water. This is 78, 79, 81. So that's 4%. So basically, I went down 9% doing those two, those two things. Now keep in mind, I'm going to have my solar panel on the top. So it's going to be powering all the time into that jackery. So as I'm using power, I'm putting power back in. 
which is the beauty of having the solar panel on top of the car. Because I do have the two 100 watt Jackery portable solar panels that I also will have with me. However, these you have to take them out and put them in the sun. And you know, you got to sit them out there. So if you want to leave and go do something, go for a run or whatever, you know, they're kind of out there at your campsite. So this is much easier. My tea is steeping. I'm really excited about these Christmas presents. Salute. I hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry I chewed popcorn the whole time. <laughs> but I was so thrilled with the idea that I could have popcorn in the van. I love you guys. I hope you had a Merry Christmas. And I hope you have an even happier New Year. Anyway, guys, God bless you. Enjoy the New Year. Watch the ball fall. Have a good time. And pretty soon we'll be in Arizona shooting a lot of cool videos. God bless you and have a good day. Bye-bye.